Hi, this is Aaron Linsta. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Today I'm at the Embarcadero in San Diego. The Embarcadero at San Diego is one of the most enjoyable places in the city. It's just uh, less than a mile from the airport and if you have the chance to actually come and check out the experience at the Maritime Museum. It's actually really fascinating because if you're a tall ship maniac, if you like old ferry boats or small boats and even military boats, they even have a Russian sub. So let, let's talk about that a minute. Right behind me is the Star of India. This is one of the original two ships that were part of the Maritime Museum way out long ago when my parents moved, my brother and I, into San Diego in 19, early 1980s or so. The Star of India, we call it the Star, and then the Berkeley were the two main ships that were part of the museum system. So you could actually come down here and tour on a real sailing ship. Now at the time, the Star of India wasn't working. I mean, it's here, it's birth, it's still floating, but they're, they're having a lot of troubles with it and money problems, as most museums do. So they would get groups and people on here. I even had a guy in my scout troop, he got to sleep on this thing. I don't know if they do it now, but I bet with the right amount of money, you and your youth group or whoever could come sleep on the Star of India. So it's actually a pretty fascinating place. It has multiple decks. You can go down and see where the bilge is and where the captain's room and the, the quarters were. It, it's totally cool. You could spend a good two hours on this thing. Uh, one tragic story, I saw one poor guy. He was walking around the Star of India and he was carrying his camera with the uh, neck strap hanging don't do that on this ship because he was walking along he snagged the neck strap on one of the capstan poles on the camera yanked or on the ship yanked the camera bang the camera exploded into like 20 pieces all over the deck these real bright shiny brass rings they're like oh no collect it we'll fix it like no nah grab that garbage and throw it in the drink. That was like a $5,000 camera. So just a heads up, be mindful on these ships because when you walk around there's lots of snuff to snag a, a purse loop or a camera or anything. But the, the Star of India, it's pretty neat because they have old ships on there. You can see what, when you sit versus uh, the, the little back benches on the seats, they flip back and forth. A lot of enjoyable stuff on here so you can get a taste of what it's like to be on a sailing ship. The next original ship as part of the Maritime Museum was the uh, USS, or it's not USS, it's just the something S Berkeley. And that was from the Bay Area and it was it serviced whenever steamships and paddle wheelers were cruising around. And these two ships were actually part, I think it's a California Historic Number 1030, well, we'll check that out in the video here. But these two particular ships are part of a California historic monument system. And the Berkeley, man, you could spend at least two hours in that thing toying around because you could get into the engine room, you can see what those huge boilers look like and what it was really like to run that sort of ship. And they've got tons of ships and bottles and old, uh, it's like replica ships of stuff from all around the centuries. It's, it's really a fascinating tour. And, if you have any questions on there, the, the docents are more than happy to answer questions. Of course, both have gift shops and all that. So that's way back when. Fast forward a few years or three, and all of a sudden the Maritime Museum started picking up more ships. Yeah, like, you know, you go down to Walmart, hey, I need to buy a square rigger, could you order that? Th oh no, Amazon. You could order an Amazon square rigger, I bet. <laughs> but anyway, they, uh, they started getting more ships in here. And just a year or two ago, the ship, the U uh, was it the HMS San Salvador, uh, got commissioned. It was actually a square rigger that was built in San Diego and sailed around the harbor. And they actually berthed that ship right here. And at least according to the info at the Maritime Museum, you can actually sail on that thing. They do like a four hour cruise, totally cool. So there, there's actually the Californian and another ship, and during the summer, sometimes they uh, go out, and you, you pay the money, they'll actually take you out in a gun battle. So there is actually real black, uh, black was it black powder cannons that they'll fire each other, fire at each other, and pretend to actually have a fight. Of course they're not, because you know, getting killed and getting hit by grape shot would be a real bummer. <laughs> but you can actually do that. 
And then they caught one of the coolest additions ever. They have a Russian submarine here. That's right, folks, a Russian submarine that plied the coast of California doing their spying thing. And one of the cool things, this is your mission, if you go on the submarine, two things. One, they make you go through this real small porthole to make sure you can make it through and they do not let you on that boat. Because if you're overweight or you've got knee problems or, or like in a, a wheelchair, there is no ADA compliance in Russia. That's the way it is. If you're a submariner, you're not gonna make it. But you go through this little porthole and you get on this Russian sub and you get on there and your goal, this little scavenger hunt thing, is when you go through there, there is actually a picture of the Hotel Dell taken from that Russian sub back in the Cold War. So imagine that a Russian sub was sitting just off Coronado Island, which is just behind me like three or four miles, and they were actually sitting there taking their pictures. That, this isn't a nuclear powered sub, this is a regular diesel powered sub. And they don't own nuclear weapons on it, but these little fast attack boats, they were actually cruising around and checking the place out. So check that out. Also, one thing I discovered on the Russian sub is when you throw some of the switches, stuff actually works. It is so cool. So you actually get to flip switches and try things. And they, they have the torpedo tubes and you go through the different bursts. And you get a feel for what it was like to be on a Russian sub during the communist USSR era. It was pretty crazy. A word of warning, <laughs> my girlfriend, uh, my, my mom warned her, hey, be careful on those ships because you might get hurt. You don't want to wear open-toed shoes. Well, she insisted that she wanted to wear cute flip-flops. I'm like, okay. Ugh. And so she got on that sub. We were walking along and there was a piece of steel. She got her foot under it and stepped up. Oh, pain. So just a word of warning, if you are the open-toed shoe type and you get on that boat and you walk around, there is a good chance you're going to hurt your feet. It's not enjoyable. But then you get to compare to a U.S. sub. The USS Dolphin is birthed here as well, and it's part of the Maritime Museum. The USS Dolphin, according to the U.S. Navy, is the deepest diving submarine in history. I remember when they listed the, the dive rating was a thousand feet plus. I know you Navy guys and gals can correct me if I'm wrong. I'll see if I can look that up and put it in, in the info at the bottom of this thing. But whatever, the, I think it's actually still classified how deep that sub can dive. But you can actually get on an American sub after going to the Russian sub and see the comparison of the crew quarters and the captain's quarters of what it's like to be on an American sub. So you can actually not be in the Navy. You don't have to have any security clearances. You don't have to get in on the base. You don't even have to show your ID. Oh yeah. And you actually get to tour around on a US sub. Now all of the tours are self-guided on all of the boats at the Maritime Museum at the Embarcadero. And you might say, wow, that's, that's kind of lame. Well, the nice thing about it is you can go at your pace. You can see all these different boats and then look around. Uh, you can also get on the, uh, the Medea, which is a real beautiful teak wood boat. It, it used to sail around. It was a priving sailboat. You couldn't get, you can't get under the deck uh, to look around inside because I guess everything's real delicate, but you can walk on the boat. It's pretty cool. There's a Navy pilot boat as well and you get on that guy and it goes around there's actually the boat called the pilot where the maritime museum takes you on a tour of the harbor so that's really cool too are you getting the idea that's right i mean it is crazy just how much sailing boating and nautical experience can be had at the maritime museum on the embarcadero now one of the things about the Embarcadero is it is on the main drive on Harbor Drive in San Diego. And just across the street from the Maritime Museum is the U.S. County, or the, the, Sandy, sorry, the, the San Diego County Administration Building. Now, if you look at this picture here, does it not remind you of Hawaii? You betcha. Because that building was actually designed after World War II to look like the Pacific Island style Hawaiian look. So when you really look at that building, and I'm looking over my left here, that's where the building is from the Star of India. There, there's a real famous statue on there. It's a, a Native American girl holding, I think, a water jug. We'll, we'll look at the picture here. And so it's really beautiful with the palm trees arching in. I mean, super, super cool. Now, 
for us old time San Diegans, there used to be a place called Anthony's Fish Grotto to the right. Book Gone. It's a real bummer. So apparently uh, the uh, Brigantine or some such thing is going to be built there. So th there'll be in a couple years here, there'll be a, another seafood sort of place. But you come along here, one of the challenges too is finding a restroom. Yes, if you get, <laughs> if you get on the Berkeley, there actually is a restroom. You got to pay, of course, because you know, they just want any anybody pilling on there. But then the coolest capture of it's I don't think it's part of the Maritime Museum you know, correct me if you, I'm wrong but the USS Midway is now part of the Embarcadero part of ships that thing is so cool if you're into Navy fighter craft and helicopters and old things and an, an entire US carrier that thing is located um, I, I could see it over my shoulder here in fact here let me turn the camera why not who cares so let's see, uh, right there, right there, that is the USS Midway. She was used, I think the, uh, the Admiral wanted to use her in Gulf War I because he knew that she was still a super reliable ship. She's completely decommissioned and of course there was this big old drama to get her in and, and you say her because that's how they refer to ships, deal with it, her. They brought her into the harbor, and now it's part of the museum. Uh, some companies actually have, you can even rent this thing out if you want to have a big company party on that ship. I've done it before. Super cool. Get up there at night. I mean, and during major days, I don't know if they have a free day now, nowadays, but you can get on that ship uh, September 11th. They'll have things for veterans, uh, 4th of July. It's crazy. And this is the midway I was talking about. This thing is incredible. You could spend all day on this sucker going up and down. Some of the radar systems are live. Check out the aircraft. They got an F-4 from the Vietnam area, uh, F-18 modern, F-14 think uh, Tom Cruise and <laughs> Top Gun. Uh, helicopters, war hoovers, totally cool. Also, I met this guy, uh, Chris Nowacek. He likes to come down here sometimes and play Revolutionary War Fluid, or maybe it's this way. But uh, take a listen. Check out this guy's link down there. He's totally cool, too. Local secret, go out of season. It's much easier to get on these ships when it's not crazy because usually parking on the Embarcadero, no bueno. They do have parking meters here, so they take coins or credit cards, a uh, three hour max. So getting to the Embarcadero, if parking is slammed, if you park way down towards the county building, there's a little bit more room. But just know that parking could be an issue. So there are other underground parking areas across the street. There is a parking area at the New Children's Park, and it's an underground deal. I don't know how much it costs. It probably changes based on the season, but you can park right across the street, park in there, and then enjoy the entire Embarcadero. And then just farther down is Seaport Village. We'll see if we can make a video about Seaport Village, but I mean, just a real cute nautical village. I mean, it looks like something, uh, not on Martha's Vineyard, that's too rich, but somewhere on Cape Cod, maybe. It, that's, that's pretty fun. Uh, high rides at the high you can go get a drink at the 
the uh, the 40th floor if you're of drinking age and such. So lots of stuff to do. I think there was even a Roos Chris Steakhouse if you want to blow some real bucks. So lots of options at the Embarcadero. Highly recommend if you got the chance to spend a few hours and just rock around the ships. It, it's a really fascinating experience. So the Embarcadero is well worth it if you've got some time or even just a day from the airport you can catch a ride sharing service over to here and enjoy the Maritime Museum. My name is Aaron Linsdow. Thank you very much for watching this World Beyond presentation. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.